Knock, knock. Who's there? Daily Solutions Podcast. Oh, nice. Yeah, come on in. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. So, how's everybody doing? Great. No, I can't hear you, but I'm, I'm assuming you said great. So, nice nice to have everybody back. Welcome to the Float Tank uh, Daily Solutions <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> can't even remember the name. <laughs> we say it so many times, every single time we record. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. So the question today is, I've noticed some swelling on my walls in the float rooms where it meets the baseboard. Maybe from water or salt? Question mark? Question mark. Should I be worried? Question mark. Oh. Yes. Pro- probably. Yeah, that's you should not a definitely good, be worried. That's... It's not a good sign. <laughs> I mean, uh, so that's not what walls are supposed to do, I guess is the first <laughs> thing to know. <laughs> a rare sa- salesman sells his walls as great at swelling. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's probably water and salt yep. is the short of the answer getting in there. And probably what's happening is that something has kind of permeated your walls. I assume you have some kind of barrier up there, whether it's oil paint or epoxy paint or something just covering the raw drywall. And that has not been enough to stop water from leaching up into it or seeping down into it or just kind of going through the paint and wearing it out. And now what you're getting is some beginnings, hopefully, of water damage that's going in there. I mean, the thing about this is really, it's a really, like, the sooner you deal with it, the better your life is going to be. Like, this is not one of those things you want to ignore because it can range from... You notice a patch of swelling, and you might just be able to cut that patch out, re-put in fresh drywall, and you know fix. You'll have to go and fix the problem why the water is getting in there there in the first place. But like that's kind of best case scenario. It's a lot. It's a lot like a venereal disease. Like it's not. <laughs> it's not going to get better on its own. You probably don't want to bring your float tank center around other float tank yeah. centers for a little bit of time. It's kind of embarrassing, you know. <laughs> Start noticing those bumps. But it, like if we if we had doctors, I would advise you to go to the float tank doctor and get it checked out <laughs> as soon as possible, you know. But uh, but yeah, the the faster you deal with it, the better you're gonna be. I mean, so there's there's obviously an underlying problem here, which is which is that the salt water is getting into your walls in the first place that you're gonna have to fix. But for the walls itself, if you get to it fast, it's just about repatching. And if you don't, then you're in some trouble because that that stuff can spread pretty quickly, and then you start getting moisture and water behind your walls yeah and especially if you're using kind of standard style drywall what will happen is you'll get a lot of mold that actually collects on the paper backing uh, to that drywall Um, so not as much in the the actual gypsum sort of material but then the paper back there will mold will start to spread just inside your walls Uh, it's a humid environment to begin with so mold loves it like if it can get a start then it's just going to go crazy back there and that's the sort of thing that you just really don't want to have spread or expose your customers to definitely i mean even even with the mold and mildew resistant sheetrock that's out there and and you know if you have wooden studs it'll start going on that too it'll get to the studs and you'll start finding mold there and then you're in a situation where you're basically going back to the basics you know you're pulling your walls off and you're spraying those down with bleach and you're really getting you really have to go in there and do kind of a serious renovation project to deal with stuff like that and so I should say this isn't the least common thing that we see or hear about. Um, at some point, if you just haven't even encased your entire room in some sort of yeah. waterproof covering, <laughs> then you're going to hit this. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's you know a few months in or a few years in. Anything that is kind of below the level of your shower head at some point is going to show some kind of water damage um, in, in almost any float tank room that you have. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's, you know, one of the things we see a lot is people maybe not doing enough waterproofing and it's almost like right where you stopped this starts to happen you're like well i thought like tiling all the way out to this point in the room would be okay and then as soon as the tile ends you see kind of swelling in the drywall so at this point yeah we we basically just surround our room entirely in waterproofing because it's we just at some point decided that it wasn't worth it anymore you know like it it's hard to know exactly where enough is and like dealing with it when you under guess is so annoying and it costs more to overdo it but just kind of the the like peace of mind and knowing that your room is kind of like bulletproof is is well worth it yeah and it really is you know we started out with showers that were going uh maybe three or four feet out from where the shower area was in the corner in each direction and then you start to see this this kind of swelling of the walls about three or four feet out wherever the tile stopped yeah and so we'd expand that and then our walls suddenly went about seven feet out from where the shower is and then after another year at the end of those seven feet panels you'd start to see just a little swelling coming in in the walls 
And I should say too, you know, the, the alternative to actually putting up some waterproof panels, we, um, we use uh, unplasticized PVC panels in our, our rooms to kind of stop the salt and water from getting at our soundproofing beneath that. But the alternative is to actually plan on doing this when you see the swelling to go in and cut it out, patch in some more drywall, recover it up, redo your baseboards if you need to, and just kind of do this ongoing maintenance in order to keep your costs relatively low and not have to actually pay the uh, the huge bill to surround your entire room in waterproofing. Yeah, that's... It's very annoying, and then you know the mud has to dry, and you have to repaint, and all that sort of stuff. It's not, it's not super easy. Which means you're now paying more money for materials again. You're paying money for labor, and Good. you're losing yourself money in right. opportunity you're- cost for not being able to run floats during the construction. So I, I actually do know centers who plan on doing this, and it's just because they don't have the extra, um, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of dollars to properly protect the rooms at the very beginning. And then I know some who do this with a plan of upgrading, but yeah, again, to the to the question that was sent in, if you're seeing it, you should definitely be worried. You should definitely be going in there and planning on tearing it out. And if you have the money, you should definitely consider upgrading as well. I will say the other nice thing about uh, like overdoing it or just having a ton of waterproofing everywhere is it makes cleaning a lot easier. You can kind of clean in a much more like unbridled fashion when you're in there just like spraying things down you're not worried about the water bouncing off and hitting this part of your wall that's not well protected like it just lets you kind of go to town when you go in there and clean and that ends up making it faster for your you know you and your employees when you're cleaning up and it means you can clean better and it's just kind of generally easier so it has other benefits as well yeah for sure and and that's what we've cited so all of our rooms now have that we don't have uh really any exposed painted walls that are within access of water anywhere in any of our rooms yeah i like to graphically call them uh or describe it as they're like you could murder someone (laughs) in one of the rooms and clean it up within three minutes and no one would know that a murder had just taken place in there right like gruesome too just blood everywhere (laughs) and uh like that's kind of the goal that you want to go well not the murder part but getting to the point where your room is so coated that this just no matter how much of a mess is made in there you can clean it up and it's totally ready for the next person easy peasy yeah all right we're not murderers. No, don't. We're just going to edit that last part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess there you go. You should go deal with that is the answer to, <laughs> to, to today's question. All right. And if you have your own questions that you'd like to be horribly mangled by us trying to answer them, <laughs> go to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast and send them on in. Bye.